Welcome to Do-It-Yourself Drum Triggers. I'm Sean and I'm going to show you how to build drum triggers that actually work. For supplies you're going to need an electric drill, a flathead screwdriver, super glue, a small drill bit, a tape measure, a crescent wrench, a Phillips screwdriver, a one inch round drill bit, and a Phillips drill bit. You're also going to need some supplies from your local hardware store including some small L brackets like these, some 5 8 inch or smaller Phillips wood screws, some number 10 by 32 machine screws along with the matching nuts and washers. You'll need three screws, nine nuts, and nine washers for each six lugged drum you're going to do. Add a screw and three washers and nuts if your drum has eight lugs. Some supplies I forgot to add when making the video are electrical tape, sheet metal shears, a jigsaw, and some scissors. You also need some thin sheet metal to cut into a circle about one to two inches smaller in diameter than your drum. This should be fairly thin so that it can reverberate. You'll need a matching piece of thin plywood cut with a jigsaw into the same size circle. From a fabric store, you can get a large piece of foam, one inch thick, high density, to also cut into a circle with a pair of scissors. You'll want the three round items to match up almost identical when you lay them on top of each other. From Radio Shack, you can buy a piezo transducer, and this will be the sensor that converts your drum hits into an electrical signal. Let's go ahead and get started. First take your piezo and unravel the wire from the casing. Now get your flathead screwdriver and put the end into the small slot on the edge of the casing. Pry the casing open, but make sure not to dent the piezo like I did. Now use one of the machine screws and pop the piezo out of its slot. This should be fairly easy to do. Remove the piezo from the casing and go find a quarter inch mono jack or XLR jack, depending on what your drum machine accepts. I have an Alesis I.O. unit, so I'll be using quarter inch, actually a female quarter inch jack. If you can't find these, just use a long quarter inch or XLR cable so that it can exit the drum. Cut the wire on the cord and bare the individual wires. Now attach the bare wires from the cord to the wires on the piezo. Seal it all up with some electrical tape, but make sure that it's secure. Now that you have your piezo ready, you can start on the drum. Remove your batter and resonant heads from the drum. Get your Phillips screwdriver and remove every other lug on the batter side of your drum. So if you have six lug drum, you'll remove three lugs, and if you have an eight lug drum, four lugs. Set those aside for now and grab a few L brackets. Put the brackets on the inside of the shell and reattach your lugs, making sure not to tighten the screws all the way. You'll do this once the plywood base is in place. When you're done, it should look like this. Now take your disc-shaped piece of plywood and place it underneath the brackets. Put the drum on its side so that you can hold the plywood in place and use the 5 8 inch or shorter wood screws to secure the plywood into place. You can tighten these all the way. Make sure that the plywood doesn't rub on the edge of the drum in any spots. Now that the L brackets are level, you can tighten your lug screws. Take your disc-shaped piece of sheet metal and place it on top of the plywood. Make sure that the edges are aligned. Use the small drill bit in your electric drill and drill a hole perpendicular to one of the lugs that you didn't remove. You'll want to do this about an inch from the edge of the sheet metal and plywood. Insert one of your machine screws into the hole you just drilled and then move on to the next lug. You'll want the screws and holes to alternate with the brackets. At this point you should mark one hole on the sheet metal and plywood so that you know what holes line up with each other, but I did this later on. Remove the sheet metal and screws, flip the drum over, and insert the wood screws into the holes you just drilled from the back. Flip the drum onto its side and put some washers and nuts onto the screws. You can put these on all the way, but watch out for stray cats that try to steal your parts. Once you're done, the screws should be locked into place and it should look like this. At this point, you should grab your crescent wrench and screwdriver and really tighten the nuts down. Now grab three nuts and washers and put the nuts onto the ends of the screws exactly the same distance down the shaft of the screw. Then add another set of washers on top. Place the sheet metal onto the screws and line up the holes. When you get the sheet metal set to about 3 quarters inches down from the side of the bearing edge of the drum, you can grab your piezo trigger. Put some super glue on the flat side of the piezo. You can also use epoxy for this. Place the piezo glue side down onto the center of the sheet metal. This will effectively turn the entire piece of sheet metal into a trigger. Find something to set on the piezo until it dries and go grab a beer. When it's dry, you can remove it and have your drill ready with the one inch round drill bit attached. Drill a hole in the very center of the plywood. Put the jack through the hole and then line up the holes on your newly created large piezo disc 
to the machine screws. Put some washers on and then tighten your last three nuts down with the crescent wrench. Put the piece of foam on top and make sure that it sits a little higher than the bearing edge of the drum. If it doesn't, you'll have to readjust your large piezo up or down so that it does. Now place your batter head onto the drum. As you can see, I used a pearl mesh head for this to keep ambient noise low. Put your rim back on and tighten it down so that it's flat to the touch. Flip the drum over one last time so that you can secure the quarter inch or XLR jack to the drum. In my case, I just have a bracket, but if you have a long quarter inch cable, you'll need to make sure that it's secure so that it won't pull the piezo off of the sheet metal. You can either run the cable through a port on the drum, leave your resonant head off completely, or do like I did, and use a small holes port on the resonant head to pass the cable through. Repeat this for each drum on your kit, and when you're done, your new do-it-yourself electric acoustic kit will be ready to play. So this is the final result. Uh, we have all the drums set up, got the heads in place, and I'll show you how sensitive these are as compared to some of the other ones you'll see out there. Even around the edge of the drum, you still get a lot of sensitivity because the sensor is actually encompassing the entire head.